Of course, now I'm set up, the snow is starting to ease off, or it's actually certainly getting a lot finer, which is going to be harder to, to pick up in the shot, but we'll, we'll give it a go. One piece of gear that I find absolutely essential for shooting in the snow and rain is this little mat box, which I use for video, but um, it's really useful for photography too. I've got a really small lightweight one here, so it's easy to pop in the backpack and carry. It doesn't weigh anything. I found this spot a few evenings ago. It's a fairly local woodland to me, and well, a couple of evenings ago it started to snow really heavily, and it was just after sunset that I found this spot. We had blue hour, Snow was coming down really fast, really thick. We got 20 centimeters that night, so that was really cool. And I managed to get one shot before it got too dark. And in fact, before it got, my, my camera got covered with snow. It was really, it was a bit of a wet snow. So not good, and I didn't have my cloth with me either. What I decided to do with this one image is have a little bit of an experiment, try something new with the way I edited it. Now. Recently, I've been really focusing on my editing and color grading in my filmmaking on that side of things. And I realized that I, the, way I, the way I shoot, the way I, I should say, the way I expose my, my shots, my video, and the way I edit them in post uh, is a very distinctive look that's very filmic, cinematic, if you like. And I'm actually, I'm narrowing my dynamic range on purpose, both from the exposure in the camera and also the way I'm editing. And it's giving me a very flat look. Well, for film, I actually like that look. I think it works really well. It looks very documentary, sort of, well, cinematic really is, is the word. Anyway, I thought I would give that a try for photography. Never thought of it before. So what that means is I was still exposing the shot the way I would normally, which is try and get as much dynamic range as possible without clipping the highlights and crushing the blacks. Now the way I would typically edit is use the full dynamic range to give me a bright contrasty image like this. But taking that film editing approach, I typically expose my footage and edit more like this keeping those brighter tones to no more than about 80% and bringing in the blacks to about 10%. This is the resulting image. It's not to everyone's taste, certainly from a commercial photography point, it's less favorable. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. I thought I'd come back today because we've had a second snowfall. This time it's midday, people have been here walking their dogs, so there's tracks now. There wasn't any last time, I was lucky, but that's, that's fine, we can sort that out. It's very bright now, uh, lots of contrast. So what I was trying to do is take multiple exposures and do some blending. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's actually stopped, it's pretty much stopped. It's sort of on and off right now. We're at the end of the, of the, the major snowfall. What I'm doing is a number of exposures at different settings because I'm going to blend them. And that's the, the technique I'm gonna be experimenting with today. I'm keeping the aperture at F14 and focusing sort of mid, midway into the shot. So I should get enough depth of field because I don't have anything close, close in the foreground in the frame and I'm gonna crank up the ISO so I can shoot, because it's fairly dark in here, believe it or not, even despite all the snow. So I'm cranking up the ISO so that I've got a, a fairly sharp, sh uh, fast shutter speed. Well, when I say fast, um, it's about 60th or 80th of a second. And then I'm gonna do a bunch where I'm taking the ISO down and I'm getting about uh, an eighth of a second, something like that, tenth of a second. I'm experimenting because when I blend all of those shutter speeds together, I should be able to create a nice sort of snowy uh, feel, exaggerate the snowfall more than I would with just one, one shot. 
it would work a little bit more effectively if the snow was coming down slower and thicker but it keeps changing and now it's coming down really fast and really fine so i don't even know looking through the the on the monitor here i don't even know whether it's going to register to be honest i need to look at it on the big screen to find out so this vlog could be a complete waste of time <laughs> it didn't quite work out as planned i really needed thicker fluffier and drier snow the idea was to blend a few shots in photoshop and having layers at different opacities to build up the snowfall you can see that work a little bit in the final shot where i also cleaned up the footprints as well trying to come out. It's early afternoon and I don't like that it's getting so bright, mainly because I can't see any screens. <laughs> I've not actually been in this part of the, the woodland before. It's very dense, a lot of small, small trees and shrubs. <laughs> It's so nice to be walking in the snow, in the woods, particularly when it's snowing hard. There's just something magical about that. Well, who can resist a very simple monochromatic image like this? Dead grasses and plants covered with fresh, fluffy snow. I've shot these a million times before. I'm gonna do one more. It's nice to experiment with these. Try shooting up, down, shallow depth of field, more depth of field to get the whole thing sharp, but blurry background. Yeah, it's a great little, great little thing to practice this, these sort of things. Looks like I could squeeze through there and walk along the side of that little stream. And uh, it looks like an animal's been down there, but no human. So might be some nice fresh snow and uh, potential shot. Let's go and have a look. I've been here in the summer and the autumn and the spring and it's, there's nothing here. It's very, you know, busy, usual, busy, chaotic, uninteresting, but the snow has just stripped everything down to simple, dark and light. And I love the way the snow's collected up on some of these rocks in the stream. And yeah, I'm gonna give this a go. I've got my polarizing filter on my lens. There's lots of reflection in that water that I'll be able to cut out and just get a really simple black and white shot. So I'm shooting this at 40 millimeters, F11. I'm going to focus on the front of the shot on the little stones, snow, sto snow, yeah, yeah, snow covered stones in the front. And, uh, oh, come on, stop that. Go away. Um, and then I'm gonna do another shot. Oh my goodness, the wind's picking up. That's actually quite nice. Then I'm gonna do another shot where I'm focusing at about halfway back. That's gonna give me a nice sharp foreground. The foreground's probably about six, seven feet away. So I could probably do it in one frame, one shot, but I'm gonna, gonna bracket it anyway. So I always use a self timer, if I can actually see it. I usually give myself a five second self timer. Nothing amazing, but quite pleasant nonetheless. 
yeah, that's good. In terms of filters, I don't really believe in filters other than a polarizer. And I pretty much keep my polarizer on my, on my lenses all the time. And uh, for this, perfect. This is a truly delightful little walk along this side of this stream in these conditions. Thing is the wind is picking up now and all that lovely snow that was holding onto those tree branches all morning is all falling off and that lovely, lovely untouched snow is now all messed up. So uh, anyway, we'll keep plodding along. We'll, um, we might find, we might find a spot free from all the mess. There's some nice shapes, but uh, I don't know. I'm actually treading on ice right now, and that's about four feet. There's four feet of ice that you think is, is ground, and you're actually on, on the stream instead. It's nice, it's nice to look at, but is it gonna to translate to a photograph? That's always the question, isn't it? I don't think it is. You know, it doesn't help to try, right? Even if you don't think it is. Sometimes you can be wrong. Sometimes it can be a pleasant surprise when you get home, bring up an image on your computer on a large, large monitor. It's like, oh, there is potential there. That does work. But in this case, I'm not gonna try. Very pretty, very, very pretty. Just uh, not the sort of thing that I particularly want to photograph though. Oh, it's just so lovely to be out there. It doesn't matter about not getting any photos, unless I'm making a vlog and people expect to see them. <laughs> this is my first vlog. If you saw my last video, it was a bit of a channel update and the bottom line was I was gonna do, but move back to vlogging again. And, well, this is the first, so I'm a bit rusty. Give me a chance. And I'm not really in the best location. To, uh, to go out and shoot loads of exciting photos. So, but we've got to make the, the best of what we've got, haven't we? Mustn't grumble. I would love to hear what you, well, what you'd like me to talk about, maybe. Um, so quick, quick, this is unplanned. What can, I, what can I do right now? What can I say that's remotely interesting? Uh, so it's middle of the day, snowy, overcast, but still fairly bright. So let's talk about white balance. Uh, I've got a Nikon camera. Nikon cameras have always had amazing auto white balance. Like absolutely incredible. But lately I've been manually setting my white balance to 5,500 Kelvin, which is smack bang on in the middle for natural daylight and maybe I'll explain about that in another video I'll do a whole video on this actually yeah actually that would I could do a whole video but um, what's the point and why am I saying this <laughs> I don't know so some people will say oh you need a white card if you're shooting in the snow shoot a white card to get your to get a good white balance and uh, I don't bother with that or shoot the snow, maybe. No, I just find that 5,500 Kelvin is fine. Um, for overcast like this, I get a really natural daylight balance. Um, when it gets brighter, sun comes out, blue skies. Sometimes, you know, the, the, the result is a little bit cooler. So you just crank up your Kelvin to 6,000, 6,500. Depends. Obviously I'm shooting raw and you can adjust 
you can adjust it in post anyway. It's no big deal these days. Uh, I do like to try and get it as right as possible in camera. And uh, yeah, 5,500 seems to do the job. Okay, back on the railway track. I'm doing a big loop, basically. Although I can't remember where I need to go from here. I think it's through here somewhere. So, yeah, Sunday afternoon. Nothing better than going for a walk with your camera, doing some photographs, some photography, or not. Doesn't bother me. As I said, it's nice to Nice to get some images so I can make this, these vlogs fairly interesting. But uh, I think we've got enough today. Well, I'm back to where I started. But it's warmer, it's only minus three now. That's like, that's like the tropics around here this time of the year. Um, I hope that was interesting. Do let me know in the comments whether you thought that uh, combining, stacking the, the frames when it was snowing was, was interesting. Is it something you'd do? I'd love to get your feedback. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time.